The sun is directly out, a few clouds here and there, but generally a full sky. Full, uh, full sunlight is what I'm getting. Um, but anyway, I wanted to show you um, part of my off-grid kit and my two solar panels. This is the stand that I built for the solar panels. And it gets sunlight, as you can see here, it's getting direct sunlight on both panels. It's fully exposed to the sun. Um, these are each 100 watt panels. I have two. They're running in parallel and they do a really good job of putting out electricity. They really, really do. Um, but I've got these two panels hooked up to this T connector and this T connector basically allows them to run in parallel. So instead of producing 24 volts I'm producing 12 volts, but I'm doubling the amperage. And that runs into the apartment, to the living room. Stand is pretty sturdy. I did a video of it before. The stand is pretty sturdy. Um, no problems. Uh, it's made out of uh, two by eights. So there's two by fours on the back side where the, the panels are actually housed, and then two by eights actually um, support it. These are grape solar solar panels. Um, let's see here, what they're you probably can't see that all too well. Here we go. Grape solar solar panels, um, 100 watts each, 5.5 amps, uh, 22 volts open. Um, but then they have a maximum power point of 18 volts when they're on a circuit. More than enough for what I need right now. So anyway, this is part of my off grid setup and right now these panels are putting out their full power and I'll show you what I mean so this right here is my enclosure box and that fan that you hear is actually my inverter and the reason that it's spinning up like that is because I'm actually generating more electricity right now that I'm consuming so in a sense I'm wasting some electricity right now. I've got this fan running on high, pulling uh, juice from it, as well as my uh, computer is running off of it right now. So it's still not enough. But uh, I'll get into that stuff in a second. I just want to show you the uh, the actual circuitry here. Uh, this is an enclosure box. It's 12 by 12 by 4. And this enclosure box allows me to house all of the necessary equipment for my off-grid setup. This is a 12 volt off grid setup. It is a small 12 volt off grid setup, okay? It is not, it will not sustain the entire needs of my apartment, okay? Uh, that's just, it just won't until I expand on it, all right? But it's a good start, okay? As you can see here, this is a digital voltmeter. This is hooked directly to the batteries, so, well, the battery. So I can see the exact voltage of the battery. And as you can see here, uh, you see the voltage drop, the charge controller is cutting off the electricity when it reaches 14 and a quarter volts. Um, so this allows me to easily see what the voltage is at all times. It's got a blue backlit and I just put this uh, electrical tape over it, number one because of my uh, bad uh, cutout work uh, with my Dremel and number two to kind of absorb some of the shock of me opening and closing this. Um, here is my ammeter. It is hooked up to a shunt. But as you can see here, it looks like I'm getting uh, about 11 amps of DC current. And the charge controller just kicked it off, so it basically opened the circuit. There it goes again. It's The battery is fully charged, and I'm still drawing electricity, so uh, the solar panels are producing more than enough for what I need for what I'm powering right now. But uh, so I have two solar panels right now that are powering the system. They're 5.5 amps each. So you can see here that I'm putting out 11 amps. And the reason I'm able to put out 11 amps is because of my charge controller. It is probably the most efficient charge controller on the market. And I'll show you. 
I'll show you exactly what I mean by efficient. This is the inside of the box and basically all my circuits are in here. This is my entire setup. There's the charge controller, but I'll get to that in a minute. So I have two electrical blocks here. One of them is positive. As you can see here, this one's the positive. One of them is negative. This is my ground for the entire setup, okay? So all the energy that feeds the system comes into here, and then all of it is grounded here. This ground is connected to the battery ground, okay? Uh, it's not grounded to the wall or to the earth or anything. It's just battery ground, all right? Uh, but anyway, what I have here is I have my bicycle generator on the right. I have my solar panels right here in the middle. And they are combined using these jumpers here that I made out of 8 gauge wire, which run out to this 8 gauge wire here, which runs into this DC circuit breaker, okay? This DC circuit breaker is specific for DC current, okay? It's rated for 30 amps, and the reason that I got this was mainly to be able to disconnect the electricity. And I can show you, the charge controller is uh, charging, but I can go ahead and disconnect the electricity, so it's off. As you can see here, I'm not generating any amperage. Now, some of you watching this are immediately going to scream, oh my god, you disconnected your panels while they are under load, what were you thinking, blah, 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 okay? Disconnecting your panels can be dangerous if you're stupid, but this DC um, breaker here was meant to disconnect under full load. It's just, you know, with legality issues and so on, uh, you know, they, they tape these warnings on the, the, uh, the actual MC4 connectors saying do not disconnect under load, whatever. I mean, basically, you don't want to have anything connected to it, so you don't want to short them out or anything else like that. But basically what I'm saying is that um, solar panels have been around for a long time and people disconnect them all the time. Um, in fact, the charge controller. The charge controller, when it's in divert, it's disconnecting the solar panels, so they immediately go into open circuit. So they're constantly being disconnected. So for those who think that uh, just because you do it yourself, it automatically is going to ruin your uh, panels, you're wrong. Now, the, the, the disclaimer is, is that, you know, I'm not going to be responsible for your stupidity if you're, you know, shorting them out, being dangerous or whatever, then you're stupid. But, uh, you know, I have all this equipment here to basically safely disconnect my solar panels. So, the solar panels are disconnected right now. I have a draw. Uh, let's see, my draw right now is 130 watts is what I'm drawing. So, I'm going to go ahead and reconnect the uh, solar panels. So now the circuit is uh, reconnected. I'm generating electricity as you can see here, 11 amps. Voltage is beginning to rise as you can see there. Um, so uh, anyway the system is back online. But this 30 amp DC breaker is wonderful. It cost me about 10 bucks. Okay. It is not an AC breaker, it is a DC breaker. As you can see here, it's rated for 150 volts DC, okay? And uh, so anyway, my all of my generation, all of my panels, my bicycle generator comes through here, runs to the breaker, okay? And then that runs out to this 25 amp AGU fuse. Now, all right, so redundancy here. Why would I want a 30 amp circuit breaker and then have a 25 amp fuse. Well, for one, these don't come in 25 amps. Now, you could say that I would just use a simple toggle switch for the uh, uh, disconnecting the solar panels, but they're cheap, and I would much rather have something that was designed to hold current and load and be able to disconnect on and off safely. Plus, it is a breaker at the same time, so if anything ever goes wrong, then this will trip. If this fuse doesn't catch it first, <clears throat> okay? So it, there is a little bit of a redundancy here, but for me, it's a little bit of an extra insurance thing, and it allows me to manually disconnect without having to unscrew this or buy one of those cheap toggle switches for DC current. I much prefer to have one of these. It is a DIN rail uh, breaker, by the way, and that's my DIN rail back there. But anyway, 25 amp 
AGU fuse, and the reason that I have a 25 amp fuse here is to protect the charge controller, which is rated for 25 amps. Okay, now this charge controller is enormously efficient. As you can see here, NC25A12, it is a 12 volt 25 amp charge controller. Um, there's proof right there of how efficient this thing is. I'm putting out 11, actually slightly more than 11 amps from those two panels and they are combined rated for just over 11 amps. So all of the current, literally all of the current, 99.9% .9 of the current coming from those panels is going through the charge controller to the battery, okay? Now, the reason I'm able to see this, this is not final output. This is, or excuse me, this is not um, solar panel output. This is the actual final output. As you can see here, I have the battery running to this shunt. And this shunt right here allows me to monitor from my ammeter, allows me to monitor the final voltage of the system. This is actually what is coming from the charge controller to the battery. This runs across the shunt, down through this eight gauge wire here, down to the battery, the positive side of the battery. So when you see that I have 11 amps right here, I really am generating 11 amps. That's final amperage, okay? Now, on a side note, these ammeters here, these analog ammeters, I've seen on Amazon so many people complain that they're dead on arrival or they work for a second and they blow up. That's sheer stupidity on the people's part. And I feel bad for the company who actually sells these because they probably lose money on them because of stupidity. These require a shunt. And as you can see, well, you probably, yeah, you can probably barely see that. This is uh, 75 millivolts. It requires a 75 millivolt shunt, which is exactly what this is. And this will take 100 amps. And basically, uh, it allows you to be able to have a constant flow of electricity that's not interrupted by anything. So the shunt connected at these two points allows me to see what kind of amperage is actually running across the shunt. Okay, so that's how it works basically. Um, <clears throat> so that's my shunt right there and like I said it runs to the battery. Now I also have the battery sense wires, positive and negative. I am going to heat shrink this. I have this electrical tape here temporarily. Um, I ordered some heat shrink off of Amazon, should be here today or tomorrow. So I'll be getting rid of this uh, electrical tape, but um, I'm going to heat shrink this. Um, but uh, anyway, so this is the positive, and it just runs to a simple 2 amp ACG fuse. Uh, it's just a simple automotive fuse uh, that will break the connection if anything does short out. Um, so as far as you know, the circuit goes, that's pretty much you know, how it works from the charge controller. I don't have a divert yet. I am going to get a divert, and that is going to be in the form of a grid tie inverter, but I will get into that later when I get the inverter set up. As I said, this is my negative. This is my ground. From here, I have this uh, wire runs to the negative side of the battery. This is the negative side of the solar panels, the negative side of the bicycle generator. So this is my ground for the whole system. So that's they're basically jumped across, and this is both of these blocks are 40 amp blocks. So it's more than enough to handle um, the current that's going through the system because I've only got 10 amps going through the system right now, as you can see there, just 10 amps. And as you can also see, the voltage is really starting to rise because it's generating more electricity than I'm consuming right now. Um, so anyway, there's the entire setup here. I know the wires are kind of, you know, everywhere, but it's functional. I'll, I'll straighten them up a little bit, but for the most part, it's pretty much the way that I'm going to have it. Um, I am planning on adding a, uh, a battery disconnect from the system, but uh, I'm still thinking about whether or not I'm going to need that, basically to disconnect the battery from the whole system. Uh, because essentially speaking when this fuse blows or when this is off it breaks the whole system the whole thing because everything runs through here so when I shut this off there's nothing no electricity going through any of this the, the circuit has been broken so I'm still thinking about it but anyway as you can see here all the wires run down here and it does look like kind of a mess I mean quite honestly 
But the reason that I have all these wires just kind of hanging out around here is because I have the battery on caster wheels in this uh, caddy that I made. So it allows me to move the battery around. And I've got about three feet of slack in all these wires that allows me to be able to move the battery around the room a little bit. Uh, so right now the battery is fully charged. I'm generating more electricity than I'm consuming and that's why that fan is actually speeding up. As you can see here, as soon as it hits about 14.10 on this one, almost 14.10, then it's going to divert. So, as you can see, I'm consuming um, 30 to 90 watts, and it changes based on load. Uh, now you can see it's going down, going down. So essentially, right now at this point, uh, nothing from the battery is being pulled. Okay, this is all solar panel, okay? Um, and then when it disconnects, you can see here, see, it goes up. So my final draw is about 140 amps. And uh, as the voltage is increased from the solar panels to the battery, it's actually, you know, taking less power from the battery to power this fan and this computer. And as you can see here, now it's zeroed out. So it's charging the battery again. So, uh, but anyway, so this is basically my whole setup, and it's pretty simple. Uh, the bicycle generator, which is right here, is hooked into it, okay? The bicycle generator is connected to all of this, and it's a great off-grid setup. Now, I only use, uh, I only bring the battery down to a minimum of 1278 okay that is the lowest I'll go and that brings it to 80 percent because I want this battery to last I want it to last for a while um, but to put it in perspective I'm able to increase the output of the system by adding more panels and I do plan on adding more panels I also plan on adding a grid tie inverter so that right now what's happening some of the electricity is being diverted into nothingness I'm gonna be able to take that electricity plug it into the wall and then be able to uh, uh, dump some of that back into the grid. I won't get into the legal or ethical ramifications or debates or anything else like that. We'll just say that uh, that's what I'm going to do, okay? So, anyway, that's the entire setup. This is my off-grid kit. I probably have about $1,500 worth of stuff uh, here, but the thing is, is it can be expanded pretty much as much as I want to. Uh, so it's limitless, really. Just a beautiful day out. Just a perfect day. It's the 3rd of July. Just a beautiful day. So if you have any questions, please. Um, this is an AGM deep cycle battery. It's 125 amp hours. It is, um, uh, it's a VMAX tanks, 125 amp hours uh, battery. It is powerful, 125 amp hours. And uh, it really does a good job of uh, providing electricity to various items around my uh, home. So, um, but anyway, uh, this inverter, as you can see here, it's a Royal Power pure sine wave inverter, um, 1,000 watts peak, uh, sustainable that is, 2,000 watts peak for like a couple seconds, I guess. Never drawn it that far. The reason I haven't drawn it that far is because the battery should not take more than a 30 amp draw which would turn into about 500 watts off of this so if I want to pull more than 500 watts I'm gonna to need to get another battery because it'll heat the battery up uh, the battery just wasn't meant to be discharged or charged that fast so anyway yeah again if you have any questions please feel free let me know because I'm more than willing to answer your questions this is going to pay for itself and it will be expandable so and it's fun this is a lot of fun so anyway I'm gonna have to put some more draw on this thing and uh, yeah again if you have any questions please feel free um, but it is possible off-grid in an apartment complex with solar it is more than possible the power of the Sun it really is amazing the power of the Sun